Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and this is episode 12 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Now, this week I'm going to talk about a machine that I don't really talk about very much, which is my A1200. Um, specifically today, I want to talk about the individual computer's uh, scan doubler, the MK2 scan doubler. I picked this up maybe five, six months ago. Uh, in the past, I've been using this scan doubler, and I think it is also from individual computers from back in the day, uh, one of their external ones. Works uh, mediocre at best, we get a lot of distortion, a lot of uh, uh, garbage signals, but it does let me display any Amiga on any VGA, on any VGA monitor. Uh, so I still use that every now and again for some of my Amigas. Uh, let me show you what I have. So this is my little Amiga 1200. Now, I've not actually had the keyboard and the case on here in about 12 or 15 years, I would say. Uh, I still do have the keyboard, but the uh, Commodore keys don't function on it. I need to get a new membrane for it. So what I have is this cute little adapter here, which allows me to plug a standard PS2 keyboard in. Works just fine. Uh, every key press works just fine. Uh, but the downside is, is it's not nearly as pretty. Uh, I've got a couple of heat sinks on here for some of the chips that get a little bit warm, but in general they stay nice and cool. It does have a nice Blizzard 040 on there. I think this one runs at uh, either 33 or 40 megahertz. I honestly don't remember. And 64 megs of RAM on that little guy. I've had that for years. But what we're talking about today is this little beauty. This is the Individual Computers MK2 Scan Doubler. Now it fits right over the Lisa chip here. And you just give it a nice determined press and it clicks down over the uh, Lisa chip. And then we've got a cable that runs around the back to a standard DVI connector, which works really nice because we can just hook up either a VGA or a DVI monitor right to the little guy. And it gives us some screen modes and some flicker-free modes that we've never had before. Let me show you a little bit about that. Now, right now, my Amiga is running in a nice 800 by 600 rock solid display mode. Now, there is a, a percentage of you purists right now that are absolutely screaming because I have this set to uh, a stretched mode instead of a nice little normal aspect ratio mode. Now, I can switch it over. See that? Now that makes you, uh, you purists a little bit happier. Although some of you won't be happy unless it's being displayed on a CRT. Me, personally, I like it better in wide mode. The, the black bars are just a distraction to me. I don't have some need to uh, look at scan lines on a CRT. They mean nothing to me. I like things to be beautiful. So I'm going back to full screen mode there. There we go. Now. This does not add any additional colors. So we're still dealing with a workbench anywhere from two to 256 colors when we're working with the Indivision product. But it gives us some crazy scan modes that we've never been able to use before. And it gives them to us in flicker-free video. Uh, now, if we want to go back to our traditional display, we can certainly do that. Let's go with uh, a nice 640 by approximately 480, a little bit more with overscan resolution. 640 by 476, I think. Uh, so we can use our standard resolutions without any issue at all. Rock solid displays. 
And now we have a choice of more higher resolutions. The one I use shows itself under uh, Super Plus. You see 800 by 600. Takes a second for it to refresh. Now it's coming up in a nice 800 by 600 mode. And then I've got another resolution here. Uh, let's see, what is that under extreme? Here we go. High graphics, thousand, approximately 1024 by 768. It's actually coming up as 1028 by 768. You can really get a lot on the screen here, but you see it does slow things down because we're still using our regular Amiga chips to, to refresh the screen. Now this right now is in a 64 color mode. You can see if we drop it down, let's say to eight colors, our OS 3.9 screen is not going to look quite as pretty, but everything will run faster. Oh, we're getting a little jitter there. But you see, it, it actually runs pretty fast. Now, I have to look and see why it's getting a little jittery. That's interesting. Now, if we want to go absolutely crazy, 1280 by 1024, let's bring this up to 32 colors. Now, who to thunk that our regular AGA Amigas could actually produce a 1280 by 1024 screen? So, uh, one of the, the caveats here is because we're in such a high resolution mode, it's killing our chip memory. We're at 864 and a half K of chip memory. So we have less than a meg of chip memory left. If we go absolutely bananas and bring this up to 1280 by 1024 in 256 colors, my goodness, the Indivision Scan Doubler will do it but it will drag the entire Amiga to a crawl, even with an 040 processor. This is just so much data that it's got to deal with. It is not a happy little camper. There we go. 365K of chip memory. Now 338K of chip memory free. So you can see this is almost a useless mode. Now less than 300. Almost a useless mode. I mean, there'd be what, what would you do with only 300K of chip memory free? But this resolution would be great if you're doing some desktop publishing and you uh, open up a screen in maybe four colors, then 1280 by 1024 in four colors is a perfectly fast resolution. Okay, that came up pretty zippy. So you can imagine now you open up a word processing program or a desktop publishing program at 1280 by 1024. Four colors is going to be fine as long as you're just doing, you know, straight black and white stuff, maybe some grayscale stuff. And I've got 1.4 megabytes of chip memory free. Now, so we're back to 800 by 600 in 32 color mode. Now, this is while you can sort of just plug and play this thing and it will, you know, uh, scan double your normal resolutions like your 640 by 400 resolutions and it will make them flicker free. In order to achieve any of the higher resolutions, you really need to tweak the, the Indivision MK2. Okay, and you do that by downloading the updates from their website. And I'll put the the website. I'll link it right down there so you can see it just fine. And I'll also put it in the description. But you want to download and decompress the, the updates for it. 
and then run this program called VGA DVI in Division and it's going to bring up a list of all of your Amiga monitors, Amiga monitor modes and allow you to tweak what they're doing. So for example, uh, high graphics interlace. That's the 1024 by 768 mode that I set up. Okay, I told it I want it to be in 1024 by 768 at 60 hertz because my monitor will support that. Now some of these features over here you might need to tweak for your specific monitor. So uh, super high res, we'll change that to high res. We'll put some scan lines in here. Let's put some 75% scan lines and take a look at this. See, it's actually filling in uh, and skipping over some, some lines there in case that's what your monitor requires to support it. Now this is not a good mode for, for this monitor, so we know we're not going to use that. We're going to take the lines off there and we're going to do lines off. Now we're going to test it out in high res mode. It only comes to there. Now we'll switch it to S high res, brings the width up to 1024 from 512. Now we'll test it. Now we've got a mode we can use. So you see, you, you can go in and you can tweak these settings for your specific needs in your specific monitors. I will not tell you that it's easy. It is a little bit confusing. But if you follow the instructions on their, their website, you can get through it. Now there's some menu options up here. Uh, override limits lets you make some additional changes over here that you couldn't before. On screen display, okay, here, VGA modes. Here you can copy modes and create some of your own modes. So if you want to create a default mode with specific clock frequencies, for example, you could take uh, 800 by 600 and now it's called copy. We'll call this uh, 10 mark, 800 by 600, okay? Now we can manually tweak some of these settings. Okay, my monitor can, is 37.5 hertz, polarity is negative. All of these different settings that can be specific to your monitor, you can tweak and set up your own VGA mode settings. Now, I'm not gonna do this because mine's already set up, but if you're having issues displaying specific modes, you can go in here and change some of these settings in order to make it display on your specific monitor. And we will just use those settings. Now, I haven't found too many issues with the Indivision. Uh, the performance is great. Performance with games is fine. Uh, it seems to, especially when you use a nice monitor like my Acer here that I talked about in my 15 kilohertz conundrum video, uh, using a monitor like this, if you're using WHD load, even though the Indivision will not always display the screen properly for games, uh, 320 by 200, things like that. It may not do that properly. If you use it in conjunction with like an Acer monitor like this that, that goes down to 15 kilohertz, it actually works pretty darn good. Let me give you an example here. Okay. So, now let's take a look at what resolution my, the combination of my monitor and the Indivision picked here. Okay, 800 by 600, huh, but it's displaying the game, which would probably normally be a 320 by 200 game, displaying it just fine. Come here, you little naughty guy. 
such a strange maze on here. Everything's so big and fat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come over here. You're mine. Oh. Oh, uh, I'm dead. Nothing I can do there. But you get the idea. So, my recommendation, if you have an Amiga 1200 and you're having any issues getting it to display on current monitors, current technology, get an Indivision, MK2, they're about 150 American dollars, somewhere in that range. Amiga Kit usually stocks them, or you can order them directly from individual computers. I'll put their website down here. Um, get yourself a nice monitor like the Acer or some of the other monitors you can find uh, from my links in the, the 15 kilohertz conundrum video that can go down to 15 kilohertz or all the way up uh, as high as almost as high as you want to and you're going to get yourself a nice system that can display almost anything that the Amiga can throw at it. Definitely worth the money. So until next time, this is Dirk the Daring signing out.